Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today you've tuned into my video series called Way Out Wednesdays or the acronym of Wow, <laughs> how fitting, right? Uh, today happens to be the 22nd video that I've done in this series. You can find all the other videos in my playlist. If you'll click the icon that you see here on YouTube, it'll take you to my main page where you can then see some labels. One of those labels will be playlist. Click on that, click on the wow videos, and you can watch a lot of these videos that cover topics from ghost to multiple parallel lives to uh, psychic kids to soul contracts to just anything that you could imagine that you might want to know about within the metaphysical realm or world. Today, we're going to talk about exit points. We're going to talk about crossing over and we're going to talk about do we really have a preordained date? that our ticket is punched, that our number is called. Some people think we do. Well, personally, I talk to dead people for a living. <laughs> uh, and that gives me a unique viewpoint on this topic because, you know, uh, the way I experience it, honestly, is I do also talk to people's spirit guides and I also read people's energies. I'm a psychic and a medium. Sometimes when I'm doing readings, I will talk to your spirit guides. I'll read your energy, which is a separate, completely different type of thing. And then also I'll talk to your crossed over loved ones. So in that way, I can tell you that there are some things that your spirit guides will tell you and some things they'd rather not tell you. And in that case, you might be able to dial up grandma and grandma might be able to tell you. So it's very interesting how you can get different types of information depending on whom you talk to. Now, I would say to you that spirit guides pretty much trump everybody. I mean, they know the real deal. Um, your grandma only really sees a small amount that of your future, whereas your spirit guides and your higher self know everything, okay? So when I'm doing these readings, sometimes a loved one on the other side will let me know that someone over here, perhaps this person who's living, is experiencing some physical health challenge or something like that. And the loved one will let me know that they're excited, that they're happy. It really is a homecoming, to be honest. It's like you leave one group of people behind and you go to your other group of people. So whereas we experience a loss, they experience a gain or a homecoming. So sometimes they'll tell me, we're excited that this person may be coming home soon. Now, of course, timing is completely not even anywhere near the same over here as it is over there. So that's really kind of a, a hard thing to predict, to be honest with you. But I will say that I have had experiences where I have had even my own personal experiences. And this is how I know that I can take this to the bank because I've experienced it in my own personal life that I've seen someone on the other side say, come, welcome. We're happy to have you. You're coming back to us. We've missed you. We love you. We can't wait. <laughs> I mean, you know, usually they say, we love you, we miss you, but don't hurry back over here. But when you're getting close to crossing over, they're visiting you more. There's a link between the worlds, especially if you have a long, drawn out illness. Um, and they're happy for you to come home. Okay. Now, in my personal experience, what I saw was some relatives welcoming someone home who was in indeed this person who was living was experiencing some physical illness. Now, we didn't think this physical illness was terminal. Uh, so that was news to me, right? 
Uh, now, of course, I didn't share any of this with this person because that is unethical, right? But in my own experience, I saw these relatives ready to welcome this person home. So in my in my thinking as a psychic medium, I'm thinking, oh no, they're going to cross over. This is terrible. I can't believe it, right? Because this person wasn't that old. They they were certainly mid life, but not, you know, in, in our world, we, we want to be, you know, quite older before we think that we're going to cross over. So I just really watched the situation, right? I just kept my own counsel and I watched the situation where I'm here to tell you that that person is still alive and kicking. (laughs) So obviously something didn't happen either these relatives were wrong, which you got to wonder how they could be wrong because they're on the other side and they can see our future or else did this person decide not to cross over? Did this person have a choice? So, right. So now we're going to be talking about exit dates. I don't think that we have a preordained exit date. Now, there's always an exception to the rule. Always. You guys, we live in a crazy place. Earth is a crazy place. There are really no, there's not very many exact, you know, or or laws, you know, law, universal laws. I will go into those. But right now, I would say that 90, the guides are, the spirit guides are saying about 90% of the time, we have some free will. Okay. So that's, that's fascinating, isn't it? So I believe that the, and the way that my spirit guides show me, because I'm a very visual person and I'm, you know, I, I like things to make sense. You know, I don't, I really am a very practical, pragmatic person. So they show me, imagine a freeway. So you're on a freeway, you're on a road And there's not many exits, right? You're on a freeway. The exits come when they come. And as you approach the exit, you can decide to take the exit or you can decide to stay on the freeway, okay? So I believe that humans have what the guides are saying, 90% of the time, we can decide to take this exit or wait for the next exit. And what's also interesting is the exits are not like, well, like six months apart. You would think that the exit, that that you would only have like a year, like you wouldn't have a long length of time, right? Like if it's your time to go, okay, well, maybe it's not Friday, but maybe it's next, you know, Tuesday. You know what I mean? That's not the case. In the case of this person that I know, this has been years. They passed that exit up. Their parents were like, come on, we're ready. Their arms were outstretched. They were ready to welcome this person home. And this person drove right on by that exit and then simply just waved at them. Hey, mom, hey, dad, what are y'all doing? Kept on going, okay? So you can have some free will in this. Now, the free will can look like several different things. Okay, so for one thing, it, it, now, this was a very simple, this was a very simple topic that I thought was going to be 15 minutes long. And as you can see, I just saw an entire encyclopedia of information <laughs> that is kind of important. So why would you miss your exit, right? I mean, well, we don't want to die. We're not ready. We're not ready to go. We want to experience Earth more. Uh, perhaps. Um, we have something that we want to experience that we haven't experienced yet. Perhaps we're single and we want to experience love. Perhaps we want to experience those grandbabies. Perhaps we want to experience having another chance at a better life, right? Like maybe my life is hard right now. Maybe I'm experiencing some physical difficulties. Maybe I'm experiencing 
difficulties in all kinds of areas of my life. And my life is kind of crappy right now, right? But you know what? Despite that, I'm going to keep on going, right? So you, you have the ability to say, yeah, this life has worn me out. I'm tired. This has been a hard life. I've, I've just really been through the ringer. And when your exit point comes up, you're like, peace out, y'all. I'm going to go check out the other side. Or you could say, I've been through the ringer. I've had a hard life. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm disgusted. But you know what? No, I'm going to, I still have a will. I still have a will, desire to go. Okay. So there's multiple reasons. Some of it is your own will, your own will power to live. Some of it is, you know, subconsciously, you're not thinking this consciously, but subconsciously, you're getting the guidance from your spirit guides. Hey, Susan, go a little bit longer. You know, come on, you can do it. Go a little bit longer because perhaps you had a, a contract. Perhaps you had a desire when you came down into this body, you incarnated into this body. You had a desire to reach something, do something, experience something, and you haven't done it yet. And your spirit guides are like, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, a little bit longer. Let's, let's give it another couple of years, right? So there's many reasons why you would just keep driving past those exits, keep going, right? And, and it, a lot of them are free will, okay? So that's interesting to me, right? I mean, and, and this, when I say you take an exit, it's not like you do it. You're not physically taking your own body. You're not physically taking your own life. You're simply acquiescing to the energy and then taking advantage of the exit, the, the exit on the freeway to cross over. And, and a lot of this is subconscious. A lot of this is a, a mixture of our own ideas, thoughts, our own personality, and then also the subconscious energy that we're picking up. Perhaps also it could be that your spirit guides are saying, hey, Susan, you've done it. Great job. Pat on the back. You've really done it. If you want to break, if you want to, if you want to tap out, go ahead. There's an exit coming up, right? I mean, it, these, all of these things can be true at the same time. And I know that that's, you know, I don't even know what that is. I don't know how you, how you, the viewer are experiencing that. It, it could be that something that you feel is, is hopeful and it could be something that you feel is um, challenging for you, right? I'm not the guru. I'm not God. I'm simply telling you what I've experienced and what my spirit guides are telling me. If it doesn't resonate with you, don't you don't have to take it on. That's the beauty of being human, right? You can say, you know, that didn't fit for me. Put it to the side, right? No problem. No problem at all. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to use that kind of discernment all the time. Now, let's talk about when you don't have a choice. <laughs> Let's talk about that 10% when you don't have a choice. So this comes into, now this is valid for your whole life and, and valid for other part, other types of your life, other parts of your life, not just crossing over. There are some parts of our life that we, that we agreed to do that are not up for negotiation. Okay, so you may have agreed to have children. Now, that's not up for negotiation because uh, John is up there waiting to come down and you agreed to have John. You agreed to have an, an experience with him, a, a parent childhood experience with him, whatever that looks like. So you've got to bring John down. You know, so you might be 35 and thinking, I'm not going to have kids. Uh -uh, I'm not having kids not going to do it. You might be 39, 41. And spirit's like, 
yeah, it says right here, the clock is ticking and you said you were going to do this and you're going to have a kid. Okay. So um, there's that situation. There, there could be a situation where you said that you wanted to experience a certain thing and that could be a bad thing and that could be a good thing. And this triggers people and upsets people. But when you're up there in between lives, you are experiencing euphoria. You are experiencing all the love and light that you could ever imagine and really not even imagine. Therefore, when you're looking at your life review and you look at your previous life and you go, my gosh, I was so close. I was so close. I almost, you know, completed this thing that my soul wanted to experience. I mean, I'm sure that if I go back down, I'll be able to complete it this time, right? So then we start making contracts. Then we say, okay, I will have that that child. I will have this baby boy, right? Or I will experience this hardship because my soul wants to know what it's like to have this hardship. So some of the things, and, and again, let's say roughly 10%, some of the things in your life are non-negotiable. Some of our exit points are non-negotiable, mostly when it has to do with someone else. Now, this, this even kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, I, I think it freaks me out because it's, I mean, it, it because it takes away our free will. That's why. When, when when we have free when we don't have free will, it feels I, I'm not a person that's into fatalism. I'm I'm just not that person, right? So so sometimes your exit point is written, what what I call written. That means it's non-negotiable. It's a contract, it's non-negotiable, it's written. Um, and that could be around also having to do with somebody else. Now, if no one else was involved it wouldn't typically be written because if it if it's not going to impact you know this person or any person then th there's no big deal you're going to do whatever you do because it only impacts you but in your life planning in between incarnations if you're up there and you're planning your next life with your soul group and you say hey, I'm going to go down and I want to work with you. And these are the things that I need to work on and what do you need to work on? And so really and truly, this is where it gets a little dicey and where, you know, listen, if you guys disagree, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm not the guru, but I've seen enough. I've done this enough that I've talked to enough dead people who've, who've done this, who've been in these situations, who've told me I had to go. I didn't have a choice. I did not have a choice. Honestly, there's so many near death experiences, right? Near death experiences where people flatline, where they die, physically, medically die. And their consciousness crosses over and meets all of the other people on the other side. They know they've died, but they're sent back. They're said, no, you can't stay here. You're not allowed to stay here. You have to go back. Now, sometimes those near-death experiences, they have a choice, right? But sometimes they have to come back. They don't have a choice. Your free will is not going to work in this particular instance. Now, the thing that kind of can trip us out is when you think of, you know, why did this person have this accident with this other person and this other person lived and this person didn't live? And then you can kind of go deeper into this karma or into this soul contracts and you can find out that potentially this was a contract that was made in between lives. And this person that crossed over decided that they would cross over when 
This other person that they may never have known or met might be a complete stranger within this physical construct, this physical world. Runs into them, has an accident or something. Now, one of those people crosses over, the other one doesn't. So in that situation, it could be person number one that crossed over decided to work with the person that actually killed them, to actually work with them, to give them the experience of that tragedy, whether it was accidental or, you know, like maybe that person was drinking and driving, or maybe that person was, you know, whatever. Now the person that lives has the opportunity to work through the grief, the anger, the sadness, the responsibility, the judgment around that death. So in this case, one person agrees to give up their free will. And, and well, I mean, it, they didn't give up their free will because they made the decision before they were human. But as they're human in their human existence, they didn't get that choice, right? So they decided, I will partner up with you and I will do this and you can experience what you need to. That's the part that trips people out. I would suggest you guys read Journey of Souls, which is a book by Michael Newton, PhD. And, and it's, it's really and truly, I think it's the best book on the subject. He is a PhD, a doctor, uh, and he's a hypnotist. He was a hypnotist. He's crossed over now. And he would hypnotize his patients and then regress them. And he learned how to regress them back to the time between their lives. And he literally simply recorded their, you know, whatever the, the dialogue was about their experience and then put the case studies in the book. So it's just basically case study, real, actual, the real recorded, you know, information from that person about what they experienced in between lives. It can really help you understand a lot about why we're here, how we're here, how we're interacting with each other, why we're interacting with each other. And it can take away the human emotional component of it because when we get up there, we're not emotional. We're not emotional about it. We're not in our human emotional body. We're in this ascended place. And that's why, you know, you can talk, that's why when I'm channeling these videos, I'm not emotional about it because this is the guides talking about it. The guides are not emotional. They're not, they're not human. So they don't have that human emotion. So all that to say that 90% of the time you get to decide when you check out and that might be, you know, you, your exit dates might be years apart at, you know, maybe even 10 years or 15 years, which I feel like kind of boggles the mind, right? Doesn't that just kind of blow your mind? Because why, okay, well, why did I decide to be on earth another 15 years? Well, again, it goes back to those experiences. It goes back to, I wanted to stick around for that grandchild, or I wanted to stick around till that grandchild was much older because I felt like energetically, I had something that I could share with that grandchild, that I was going to be an important part of that grandchild's life. Or perhaps, you know, if I stick around another 15 years, I could even begin a new kind of passion career kind of thing. You know, I'm retired, but maybe I could learn. Maybe I always wanted to be a musician and I never allowed myself to be a musician. So maybe if I stick around for 15 years, I can embrace the part of my soul that wanted to be a musician. And I can, I can feel what it's like 
to play music or to sing and not necessarily professional. Remember, your soul wants to experience this, not your wallet book. <laughs> so your soul wants to experience the joy of singing, of learning to play a musical instrument. And that would be a beautiful experience that would help your soul grow. Perhaps even they're telling me right now that you may stick around extra years to heal your soul. Remember, we talked about how a soul could say, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, this has been a hard life, I've been through the ringer, I'm really thinking that I just want to tap out at my next exit point. So you get to this part in your life where some of us have just been around you know, the block, you know, we've just, we're exhausted. And, and instead of like tapping out, you could stay in your current human form and heal yourself. Give your soul plenty of time to heal some of that toxic energy or some of that damage or some of that sadness, right? Sometimes when we're retired, we can actually start unloading the toxicity of having worked for 30 or 40 years or whatever it is. We can unload the toxicity of whatever experience that we had. We can actually start to heal. We can start the healing process while we're in our human body, which is like, it's honestly like extra credit. It's honestly like extra credit because when we cross over, of course, we're healed. When we cross over, the very first thing that happens is we, we leave this human gravity and whatever toxicity and whatever, you know, humanness, we leave that, we, we shrug it off, we leave it behind, but our soul still is carrying some of that energy. So when we cross over, we're healed, we're, we're loved, okay? So we're gonna be healed either way. We're gonna go back to zero, back to neutral. But healing it in our body, in our physical body, makes it so that when our soul crosses over, that soul is a higher vibration. And that, that's what we're striving for. That's why we come down here. That's why we're here on earth. Instead of going to some, you know, planet, you know, that would be like a, a paradise, an easy planet. We came here to grow. This is a big time, important, challenging school. So. The whole point is that every time we come here, our soul gets elevated, 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 right? That's that's what we're doing when we come here. Well, that's what we're trying to do. And so the more that you, if you can spend an extra year on earth or an extra three or five or 10 or 15 years on earth, allowing your soul to be elevated, When you cross over, your soul is much more elevated than it would have been had you just checked out. But also, there's a bonus for this as well. And that is as you stick around and you allow your soul to be elevated and healed, you're vibrating at a higher frequency. And that frequency is healing those around you. So that's a beautiful reason to stick around. Now, again, there's lots of reasons and, and some of, and they're all valid. It, there's no there's no judgment. There's zero, zero judgment. If you want to stick around because you're you're irritated and you're you know you're you're too ornery to cross over, you know, you just want to, you know, you're just mad. And no, I'm not going. You can't tell me what to do. That's fine too. Your, your choice. 90% of the time, you get to choose. There's no, there's no judgment. And the guides are saying that 
let's say you do stick around and you're ornery and you're PO'd and you've had a hard life and you're just, you're just mad about it. The guides, the, the spirit guides are thrilled to have you stick around because you want to know why? They're going to put every opportunity in front of you to heal that. They're going to give you every opportunity in all of our lives, regardless of what it is. The Every day that you wake up breathing, every minute of every day, you have an opportunity to heal a part of you, to ascend, to love. So they're thrilled. If you want to stick around another 15 years, that gives them 15 years to put people in front of you to change your perspective, to put people in front of you for you to experience something new, for you to potentially help in some way. So you're still in play. As long as you're still in play as a human, there's always an opportunity for you to grow, for your soul to grow. Actually, they have told me on your deathbed, there's opportunities for you to grow. We don't just stop growing. We never stop growing. There's always opportunities for us to grow. Always, always, always. Because that's why we came here. So to wrap it up, that is my take on it. We don't have an exact date unless it is written, unless we agreed to it before we came down here. Other than that, we actually have a lot more free will in, in that uh, than you would think. And I think all of you can think about someone you know that you thought was going to cross over and ended up living a really long time, even though they were perhaps very sick. They continued to live. They continued to live. They continued to beat the odds, right? And folks, that is a case in point of somebody's free will making the decision. Thank you so much for joining me in this Way Out Wednesday. As usual, you guys, my viewers, are the best. I love the comments you guys drop in the comment section. Read the comments on every one of these videos, and you will be astounded at the amazing information that is shared. I love that you guys share your experiences with each other because this is how we all learn, right? Uh, so thank you for that. If you like Way Out Wednesdays, consider subscribing so that you will know when I drop them on Wednesdays. Typically, it's every Wednesday, midday, sometime or early afternoon. Thank you so much for, for tuning in today. Take really good care of yourself. We'll talk again soon right here on this channel.